Hey guys, Gormanator here. I see a lot of amateurs out here in this driving range. Kind of moving the head everywhere, uh, thinking about loading back to the right and then back to the left, which are, is okay to have those feelings. I mean, pressure and weight shift are kind of two different things, but not really. Um, if you are someone that is all over the place and you want to kind of anchor yourself down, you would do exactly that. It's called a left side anchor. So right now, I'm going to make a swing and I'm just going to put my weight over there a little bit, but I'm not going to put my head over there. I'm going to have my head just stay in the middle. So I anchor my hips and femur kind of over the center of my ankle here. So I've just got a little bit of weight there and uh, pressure on that left foot. And from there, I just pivot around, feel like I'm pivoting around the left side. This side here just feels like a revolving door. Just open it up let the guests in the, in the restaurant you own, and then snap it, unsnap it through, okay? So it'll look like, like Bryson, right? He's leaning like this, then, boom, here we go. Well, there's a nice little six iron there. Actually, that was really good. I should do that when I play tournament golf. But, um, you know, if you're having trouble with the contact, you know, maybe you're hitting behind, maybe you're topping the ball, anchor yourself. Anchor's the key. You know, you have to kind of go outside of the box a little bit and go, well, now I'm just an A-frame. I got my, my head up between my, my legs that are splayed out, so it makes a letter A. Well, that's cool, but, um, you know, I'd have to have the ball in the middle if I anchored my head right in the middle to get some, uh, some good action going on. Although, if you shift it a little bit that way, you'd have, you'd have a descent on the golf ball a little more, unless you kept moving your head forward. So, it's a little bit complicated when you're thinking about these things like, uh, you know, shift your weight to the left. Well, okay, what does that do? Well, it gets you over to your left side. Yeah, duh. Uh, but there also needs some rotation. So, basically, you're following through, ending up on your left side. Now, your head usually will be a little bit behind your shoulders when you're watching the golf you don't want to be too much this way so the anchoring aspect of what i just showed you with my swing there was i just shifted my leg over there a little bit and that brought the left hip uh, forward and the tailbone over here and then i got my arms organized and my intention of just like spinning with the pressure that's over on this foot and leaving the pressure there. So the nice thing about that is I got this stick here and my alignments and those two balls. to time all that all the time for you guys that are out here working uh, in coming out to the range once a week or something you want to think of the word anchor and go I could anchor on the right side you could but you might hit behind most people are anchoring on the lead side okay um, big the big uh, hitters a lot of big hitters on the tour do that such as uh, DeChambeau and uh, uh, Cameron Champ that guy you guys launch that ball and you see Bryson, he's going like this, right? And when he sets up, like that. So it's almost like a stack and tilt, right? You know, uh, stack and tilt was derived out of uh, Mac O'Grady and the Morad system, okay? And Mac, uh, he could do it all, man. He could put his weight forward, get it centered, shift it back, shift it forward. Didn't really matter. Uh, and, you know... The, the, the thing that got mistaken, right, uh, was the fact that you can't hit driver with stack and tilt. Well, if you ever watch Troy Matson, actually I was with the stack and tilt team back in 2007, eight, well, for a lot longer than that, but I went on the tour with them while they were teaching Aaron Badley, Dean Wilson, Charlie Wee, Troy Matson, who won 2007 at the, uh, at Greyhawk there. 
Now, Troy, and each guy was a little bit different. I mean, Mike and Andy worked differently with those guys, uh, depending upon uh, how much they naturally could shift. Well, Troy was not a shifter. He was a big dude, maybe not that flexible, but when he set up, he set up like this with his spine leaning back of the forward hips, just like this. And that son of a gun, man, can make 110, 100 degree a shoulder turn like this and leave his hips there, just like this. And then when he came down, it was hammer town. I mean, you can, uh, I've got some YouTube videos out there with Troy uh, at a couple of different places. One of them was uh, at the Greyhawk tournament where I called him hammer town. And he said, yeah, hammer time. Uh, and then Cordoval, and then also up in Reno, at that one up there. So each, like Dean Wilson, was different. Charlie Wee, different. Uh, so the model would be that you were uh, feeling some anchoring on the left side. And depending upon who you were, you would, uh, you know, they would figure out where to put the upper body relative to that. But it was never, uh, definitely never like this. It was never the upper body staying on top of the hips that were over here ever ever so that's a misnomer and then of course for driving of the golf ball with stack and tilt you would uh, have the ball forward like this put a little weight over there and then you would have si built-in side bend right you'd still build in the side bend because that's component of the one two three four bullet points of uh, stack and tilt so right side bend that's that's the deal well you're already kind of putting in there when your weight's over here now I've got right side bend. What does that do? It leans the spine back. Okay, that's stack and tilt right there. So if you hear it's not, don't believe it. So I still have people come. I'm certified stack and tilt, and I still get people coming to take stack and tilt lessons because guess what? It's a very valid system, okay? It gives people roadmap to go. You can kind of figure out where you are and start going to work, right? And uh, if you're 50-50 and then you shift over 60-40 here and then you got to go back to 60-40 there, that's, you know, sometimes difficult, right? So, there you go, and here I go. Oh, let's talk about uh, cocking of the club, okay? So, if, you're, if your hands are on there, or your thumb is pulled down next to the glove, right? So it looks like a short thumb, it's called a short thumb, and then a long thumb is extended out. Well, a long thumb can hinge more at this joint right here. Okay, I put this thumb here and it won't do as much. Range of motion is cut off. For some of you out there, like myself, who's, been around I've had a lot of accidents skateboarding and stuff growing up and you know fractured some bones this that and the other um, a longer thumb makes sense for me to be able to cock it a little more you can try both thumbs long okay now it's gonna feel weird but you're gonna feel like you can really just crank it all right so I'm gonna go double double wide double long thumb right thumb left thumb and uh, you'll see that down there usually I'm a little more up here, but I'm going to go down for some extra whack on this. I'll tell you something about uh, uh, Padraig Harrington. Okay, that guy's outside of the box completely, right? He's out of his mind in a good way. And uh, something he said that he did, I'll share with you in just a second. Let me hit this ball with the double long thumb. Here we go. A lot of cocking. Just straight arm cock right there. I don't know if you could hear that. That was nice great I found that the long thumb really provides the extension of that as well so you can you can also feel that we're just pushing the handle out like this John Rahm when he takes it back his initial blast off the off the ball with the arms is this way and then it just it kind of pushes out there which stretches a bunch of muscles a bunch of muscles in this scap here right it's like like that, like that stretch there, which creates some tensor action, stretching, right? So it's a push out. And I always hit it better when I do that, but it just feels so funny. <clears throat> but, dead straight. I gotta push with the left, stretch that left scap. So, some things you can try. You know, you got to do something. If you're sitting there going like this, you got to get that out of there. So, all right. So now I'm going to quickly hop back into left anchor. Here we go. Anchor. 
Anchoring here, tilting. Another good one. If I went and played golf today, I would be anchoring. I missed a shot doing that. So again, you got to think a little outside of the box. You guys don't um, don't know where to look to find even that kind of information of like, you know, these knees. You can anchor the left side. You know, you kind of know that when you chip. If you took a lesson chipping, or you just figured out, get your feet narrow, shift your belly button over here. And you're anchoring left, a little stroke back, a little stroke forward. And by that, you're always, when you're ahead of the ball, you always have a slight descent with the club head. Think about like a pendulum of a grandfather clock. You got the mechanism up here, six o'clock here. The mechanism's 12, old grandfather clock always tick tocking around. But the mechanism stays there. Now that means in seven, eight, and nine o'clock are here, and then five, four, three are over here. If I shift myself this way, and the mechanism's over here, but the ball is still back, then guess what? You will actually be hitting down on the golf ball without trying because the, the club is already up to 7 o'clock and the ball's at 6. So just from the fact of you leaning this way, we'll have that sense of hitting uh, down on the ball without trying. And probably like a Paul Runyon kind of technique, all bent arms like this. and Yeah, that was perfect contact. I'm going to post up some of that Paul Runyon stuff on my website like this. Lean a little forward, let the arms go back and they go up. I'm leaning forward like a grandfather clock. Boom, perfect contact. He was the one that helped Nicholas too with the short game, made him a champion. More of a champion because the short game was terrible. Paul Runyon, short game, going to come to you. So there's a bunch of stuff. <laughs> I'm going to kind of keep going, but I think it's time to quit there. But uh, yeah, the Paul Runyon book, I'm going to highlight the chapters and do some videos on the techniques so you guys can sample that and start working on your short game and get better. And putting. All right. Orminator out. Have a great day. It's summertime. See you in Mexico in the fall, winter.